Dear all, <coughs> my name is uh, Ariel Hauge. I'm uh, Deputy Director of the Independent Evaluation Office at UNDP and, and Executive Coordinator at uh, UNEG. Uh, on behalf of the uh, UNEG as a whole, uh, the Executive uh, Group, uh, the Chair, uh, Susanne Fru, uh, unfortunately hasn't been able to join us yet. Uh, 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 I'm not going to go through the, the full uh, uh, thanks for the, for the stellar effort of, of, of our uh, Rome-based uh, uh, colleagues in the Executive Group and, and uh, the, 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 uh, their colleagues in turn who've been making uh, all the arrangements. Uh, 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 I, I, this more by way of calling a meeting to, to, to order, uh, to uh, welcome you, you, you all. We have an in interesting and exciting week uh, uh, ahead. I think for many, the, uh, the, uh, the highlight is, in fact, the, 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 the EPE. Uh, uh, I'm not going to, uh, again, be uh, introducing you further, other than to, to, to introduce uh, uh, Federica Butamedi, who's, who's going to be uh, moderating uh, this uh, opening session of, of the EP, and I will uh, hereby hand over. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Arild. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the opening session of the Evaluation Practice Exchange of the 2018 UNEG Evaluation Week. Uh, it's, uh, I am honored uh, to um, moderate this opening session. So, um, I have already been introduced, but for those who don't know me, I'm the communication specialist at the FAO Office of um, Evaluation. Um, today and tomorrow are going to be very important days for us as members of the United Nations Evaluation Group uh, to gather and discuss about evaluation practice. You will have the opportunity to share experiences, knowledge, lessons, best practices, and learn from your peer in other UN uh, from other UN agencies and the other guests. Let me introduce you now to the three U um, direct eval directors of evaluation of the UN Rome-based agencies. So, Oscar Garcia from the International Fund for Agricultural Development, Mrs. Andrea Cook from the World Food Programme, and Mr. Masahiro Igarashi from FAO <coughs> Office of Evaluation. <coughs> so our directors, they have been overseeing the organization of this evaluation week, and they are eager to launch this two-day event with some thoughts from their own professional experiences. So dear directors, you each have over 20 years of experience in development evaluation in the international cooperation system. We would like to hear something about what you have learned during your career as evaluators. Maza, you have attended many UNEG weeks throughout your career as an evaluator. What did you learn from the previous UNEG weeks and what are your expectations from this year UNEG evaluation week? Uh, thank you, Federica. And before answering that question, let me first uh, welcome everybody to coming to Rome, to FAO, and I hope you enjoy uh, these uh, two days of uh, EPE session. Um, <clears throat> listen, uh, you ask the old man, you get the old answer. Uh, <laughs> when we started meeting the evaluators uh, in late 1990s, perhaps uh, from different agencies, we just exchanged uh, what we do in each uh, agencies. Uh, we were about 10 people around the room. Now we have about 160 registered for this session. So it's a, a great change and it reflects the change in the uh, profession. And after that, uh, we created UNEG uh, in 2003, perhaps. Uh, and we were busy uh, meeting, uh, discussing uh, uh, branding of UNEG and norms and standards, how we work together, uh, how we organize uh, task forces, uh, uh, what other things we need to do, etc. So uh, this uh, exchange of experience element of the, uh, the general meeting becomes somewhat buried in the early days of UNIG. 
AGMs. So uh, we decided that uh, we put it aside and create these things called uh, exchange of practice uh, uh, seminars. Uh, that was early 2000. And later, uh, uh, when we uh, hosted uh, AGM in New York, we started this uh, high-level segment because we wanted to give a political visibility to the profession. Then uh, this time around, uh, we decided not to do this uh, high-level segment. I think uh, we are well known already, uh, but rather uh, uh, trying to uh, be more innovative. And uh, uh, it was led by uh, this evaluation, I uh, know, uh, what, EP committee, uh, the young people, uh, not so young as well. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, I think uh, we came out with a very exciting formula. And those who came to this uh, PDS uh, Professional Development Seminar yesterday, I hope uh, you thoroughly enjoyed uh, the training because there was always tension between whether to make EP more uh, the learning and training session or really exchange of experience. So we tried this uh, format. All this is to say that uh, uh, you know uh, you have you can anytime innovate. It's nothing uh, that has a hundred-year tradition. Uh, you can innovate, organize in a different ways as you wish. Uh, so I think this time around, uh, the EP committee did very well in making a very innovative uh, seminar, and, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Maza. I don't know if the other directors want to comment. Thank you and good morning colleagues. It's a real pleasure to be with you today uh, among so many familiar faces. Uh, this is a very vibrant community and also welcoming new faces who are now joining UNIC for the first time. Uh, the evaluation practice exchange in my view is one of the most important features of uh, UNIC because they allow us to cross fertilize and learn from each other we are a very uh, complex uh, uh, system with all these uh, various facets and every agency specialized uh, agency fund and program has its own challenges and therefore we share professionally what we understand should be the best standards for conducting evaluation in the UN. And therefore, the opportunity to exchange uh, among ourselves for me is priceless. Therefore, I'm really looking forward to this uh, EPE and would like to uh, extend my, my thanks to the EPE committee who has organized a very innovative, uh, and I would say a very dynamic uh, two-day session. And I do look forward to the interaction over the next two days. Thanks. Thank you, Oscar. Oscar, you are the UNEC Vice Chair for the Use of Evaluation. Um, as of today, how do you see the role of evaluation within the UN system and, and how is it evolving? Have we improved the way we do evaluation? This should be a very brief answer. Yeah, the short answer is yes, it, it has improved. And I think uh, evaluation is, is uh, um, um, really playing a more critical and important role in the words of the new Secretary General. Uh, evaluation needs to be of good quality and it needs to be timely. There is a feedback to uh, more real-time evaluation so as to really try to correct the course of things that are not working well and trying to get a, a quicker feedback. And that is a challenge for us because uh, we, we have a tension between conducting thorough and rigorous evaluations, which take some time, and the necessity to respond to the uh, pressing needs of the UN to better deliver on the ground. But uh, overall, I would say that uh, the quality of evaluations under the, the able leadership of uh, many of the colleagues who are sitting around this table has improved over time. There is more attention to evidence, uh, to, to the use of evidence, uh, and to really come up with uh, uh, evaluation methods that can attest uh, for better, uh, with more accuracy about the results obtained uh, by different uh, development, humanitarian, or normative interventions uh, within the UN. 
Uh, what are the, the elements of this uh, uh, quality? I would say, uh, um, on one hand, the, the use of evidence, but on the other hand, also the, the timeliness. And I would add a third element, which is the novelty. Uh, if you bring evaluations that are saying the same thing all over and over again, and our analytical frameworks are not captured to understand the underlying causes of uh, performance, then it, it gets boring. It, it gets uh, being same uh, old uh, uh, discourse. And therefore, we need to uh, challenge ourselves to go uh, beyond our limits to try to find better explanations of why uh, the performance of our organizations is the way it is. And for that, we need more uh, innovation. And I hope that this EPE will be an opportunity to expand our frontiers. Thanks. Thank you very much. Would you like to comment on this? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to add my um, thanks and appreciation uh, alongside uh, Massa and Oscar for everyone uh, today who are joining us and, and for the rest of the week. Um, also, great thanks to the, to the EPE team and the overall sort of organization of the, the whole week. And people have been very, very engaged and energetic. Um, our executive boards here in Rome are constantly pushing for more Rome-based agency cooperation. And actually, this uh, preparing for this event has been a really great opportunity to, to work together in a different way, which I think will have benefits for us down the line in, in kind of closer cooperation. Um, in terms of what sort of uh, Oscar's just said, I think this need to innovate uh, is... Uh, is very, very important for us. And I can see in the timetable of the EPE and also yesterday's uh, sessions, uh, a great focus on techniques, approaches, uh, getting the best out of new data and analysis techniques. Um, at the same time, we need to think about how we innovate in how we package and communicate the evaluation evidence to increasingly busy uh, decision makers in our organizations. Um, going beyond our organizations, as Oscar said, finding ways to package and synthesize that evidence and make better use of the available evaluation evidence, I think is really uh, critical and, and needs attention uh, going forwards. Um, so yeah. I'll end there. Thanks. Thank you, Andrea. Um, this is your second appointment as the Director of uh, Evaluation. Before the World Food Programme, you served in this capacity with the United Nations Population Fund. Um, what would you consider as the major challenge in your work as Director of Evaluation? And what would you recommend to young evaluators that are here with us today and that are also following online? By the way, the session is webcast. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, for me, it's the challenge of identifying, developing, and nurturing talented evaluators and evaluation managers. And I should say this was also a challenge when I uh, worked in evaluation as head of evaluation at DFID, uh, the UK government uh, beforehand. Um, it seems to be particularly hard for us in the UN system and beyond, I think, to uh, develop a, a talent pool and a pipeline of evaluators to move into positions, to develop uh, well-defined and well-supported career pathways for evaluators, uh, which really enables people to innovate and move and develop in their careers as, alongside uh, their sort of evaluation practice. Um, I think... The reasons for this, it's partly related to a very constrained resource environment which we operate in. One of the things I've seen is a predominance of fixed-term positions in the UN system at P4, P5 levels. Very few positions, uh, fixed-term positions at P2, P3 levels, which I believe should form a pipeline of future evaluators and evaluation managers in the system. Um, I've also noticed since I joined the UN uh, challenges in relation to mobility across evaluation officers. And these are issues that we've actually 
actively discussed and engaged in in the professionalisation working group under SO1, of which I'm the vice chair. Um, but we need, I think we need to, to do more to address these challenges collectively. At WFP, we're doing a lot about sort of building a new structure and a pipeline of talent to develop uh, within our organisation. But I think we need to work uh, beyond. The revised norms and standards for UNEG, I think, provide a very um, excellent platform to, to allow this to happen. We've done a lot of work on professionalisation and on agreeing uh, evaluation competencies for UNEG in, in recent years. And that's very important, uh, but we also, I think, need to work beyond UNEG um, to promote recognised professional standards and provide more opportunities for very uh, high-quality professional development. And I think this EPE, actually, and yesterday, provide excellent uh, examples of how we can do that creatively and invest in our own resources and learning um, to, to do that. Um, yesterday, uh, we hosted a, a round table with um, partners beyond the UN system looking at professionalization in evaluation, which we'll be talking about later in the week, so I won't talk any more about that. But I think there's a huge amount we can do and we need to do in UNEG um, to deal with that. Turning to advice to young evaluators, um, I would be advising people to self-assess against the UNEG competency framework. Uh, to use that to invest in your own professional development, to contribute actively to communities of practice, to choose ways in which you can manage your own career dynamically, um, choosing roles that will allow you to develop your skills and expand your experience, um, and not forgetting, because the evaluation competency framework is not just about professional foundations and technical tools, it's about our managerial, our interpersonal competencies too. And above all, it's about investing in communication and influencing skills to, to build this um, understanding of the, the power of evaluation, in effect, to become... Um, ambassadors for the evaluation function, no matter at which level or in which role we're actually operating. So that's what I would advise young evaluators to do, but also request them to, to step up and bring their young voice and experience there. Thank you. Would you like to comment? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think what Andrea said was very uh, uh, to the point that we have to learn. Um, I want to add one more thing, that uh, when you become a director or heading a, a function, a lot of times you have to prove that there's a value to evaluation. You see, evaluation costs money. So you're under constant pressure to prove that what we do means something, brings a value to the organization. So uh, if you're thinking that evaluation is kind of profession that has been there for a long time, actually it's not. Uh, you know, when we started UNENG, uh, no organization had an evaluation policy, no evaluators or evaluation managers in the job description. So we started from there, building up the functions. Now most of the uh, UN agencies have evaluations or quasi-evaluation functions. So uh, uh, don't take it for granted. We need to always look for what we are doing evaluation for, because it will be questioned. Um, let's not you know, keep just, uh, because evaluation is somewhat like research. So we have a tendency to uh, bog down on the uh, academic side of uh, evaluations, which is important, uh, and tend to forget that uh, utility part, which uh, you have to always question why we are doing this particular evaluation, that particular evaluation for, and then uh, adjust your uh, strategy according to it. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult task, but uh, we still shouldn't be producing 80-page reports and just uh, think that evaluation is finished. And I think these kind of things are uh, well repeated in our community, but uh, bringing to practice is a challenge as well. Thank you. Thank you very much for your intervention. I would like now to ask you all one question. So in one word, what do you think is the evaluator's most important skill? I want you to think about that. And now we're going to do a little 
exercise if you want. Um, I kindly ask, ask you to take out your mobile phones, smartphones, or laptop, tablet, anything that can be connected to the Wi-Fi. I'll give you just a little time. So with your smartphone, uh, please um, open your internet browser. Uh, you will have the uh, password of the Wi-Fi, uh, <laughs> Wi-Fi number two internet. Open your browser and digit uh, the website that you see on the top of that, www.menti.com. Ah, I see some of you already started responding. So once you digit that website, you will uh, be asked to introduce a code. So please type that code. You will find a question, and then you have the possibility to answer the question. Let's see your answers. I see they're appearing. Listening, integrity, curiosity, communications getting bigger. Don't be shy. You can all participate. <laughs> Listening now is getting bigger than communication. Integrity is the third one at the moment. Answers are still coming. Listening is getting even bigger. Analysis appeared. Ah, okay. <laughs> Listening still very big. Answers are still coming. This is the Mentimeter application, and uh, we're going to be using this application towards the EP session, so we thought this is a nice way to familiarize uh, yourself with it. Um, I think answers uh, stopped coming, so dear directors, uh, would you like to comment on what you see on the screen? Let me start. <clears throat> a very fascinating exercise, and I think that really democratizes the process so that you are not just listening, but really actively participating in this EPE, and I think it's a great idea to use this type of tools. We can see that there is kind of a, a, an agreement on some of the skills that are necessary, and of course we need to listen carefully because we want to see and we want to listen to everybody, right? So that we remain impartial and therefore we are not uh, fully biased in terms of what we're doing. But once we listen, we need to analyze. And once we analyze, we may arrive to some findings, but not just some findings, perhaps some conclusions in terms of trying to understand what we are evaluating. And I think that is really a paramount uh, uh, um, task of what we are doing. And based on that, having the ability to communicate uh, the result of our analysis in a synthetic and action-oriented way so that it can be useful. But I would say that uh, encompassing all these uh, uh, skills that you have mentioned, in my view, the one to me that is really most important is to act responsibly. What do I mean by that? Uh, we as evaluators have the responsibility to assess the performance of an institution. And therefore, we deal with the attention, the attention of our senior management, the attention of our executive boards, the attention of our stakeholders. And we need all these skills, but we need to be responsible for what we are writing, what we are saying, in order to be constructive and be really part of that UN system that delivers uh, its on its ground, on its promises. Thanks. Thank you very much, Oscar. I want to give also the chance to the others, if they do have any comment or... I think not, not to repeat what uh, Oscar said, because I, I really um, appreciated how he expressed that. I think sort of building on that, the issue around sort of acting with integrity, but also I spotted it on there a moment and how it sort of shifted again. This issue around uh, reflexivity, I think is important and holding the two um, in balance uh, and making sure that they're, they're addressed together in everything that we do, in every way we, in which we communicate with, with users. 
um, of stakeholders, of beneficiaries, is, is, is the fundamental bedrock for me. Definitely. Martha? Uh, thank you. This is very interesting because uh, we often tend to think that the skills are uh, knowledge or actual technical skills, but this points to more about uh, how you behave, uh, more of the competencies uh, as, a, as a human being, how do you approach evaluations, it's like a principles, and maybe we can develop something from here. I personally put humility because uh, I think while we have to be equipped with a lot of knowledge and the analytical skills, uh, we have to communicate, we have to listen, etc. But in the back of my head, I always think that there is a person on the other side, the program manager or project manager or the people who is running the activities, uh, who faces daily challenges, and we go there, and we cannot just, you know, be there one month and then tell them, okay, this is the right way to do things. Right? Uh, so it's always uh, uh, good to uh, have a little bit of humbleness or humility in your heart. So you go there and trying to see how you can help uh, the program or the organization achieve its own ob objectives. Uh, rather than just telling them how to do their job. And that's uh, the point I wanted to make. Thank you. Thank you, Masa. I like that. OK, thank you all for your contributions. Um, um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like now to introduce you to the EP organizing uh, uh, members, um, to the EP committee. So, um, yeah, sorry? Some not so young. Well, I didn't say anything about that. <laughs> We're all young, aren't we? Um, okay, so Amelie Solal Seligny uh, from FAO, uh, Deborah McQueen from the World Food Program, and Fumiko Nakai from the International Fund for Agricultural Development. I would l also like to thank uh, the other members of the EP organizing uh, committee uh, from FAO uh, Aurelie Larmoyer, Michal Khan, uh, Jenny Bonomi, uh, Natalia Rodriguez, and also our two uh, interns who joined uh, recently. Um, Olive uh, uh, Ziambo and Dylan Citerin. You can all stand up so people can see who you are. <laughs> and um, also from, um, yeah, if I, yeah, yeah, please stand up. Please stand up, don't be shy. Have you, have you seen who they are? No? No, I hear no. So, Aurelie, Michal. Jenny, Natalia, Olive, Dylan. Well, I'm, sh I'm sure you, you'll get to know them by the end of these two days if you don't know yet. Okay, so um, from the representative of the committee, please, Amelie, you have the floor. Thank you, Federica. So um, I just wanted to briefly um, recall everyone how this EP was uh, organized and prepared. So basically, we started around uh, September, October last year by creating this EP committee with representatives from uh, the three Rome-based organizations, uh, Fumiko and Deborah from uh, IFAD and WFP respectively, and some of my colleagues from uh, FAO. So the first thing we did uh, as a committee uh, was to launch an online survey. I, I, I suppose you remember it. It was in November last year. And the main objective of this online survey was to um, open two suggestions to define the topics uh, we should discuss during the EPE. So we came up with the first list uh, together in our committee and then we proposed it in the survey and we asked people to comment, uh, vote and also propose some other topics. So we received a lot of uh, interesting responses and then based on these responses we uh, came up with a final list of topics that will be discussed during this uh, two-day uh, conference. Um, and then once we had this final list, we opened, um, we launched a call for expression of interest. So d we defined a few rules, or at least one important rule, which uh, you all know about. It's a no PowerPoint rule, and Deborah will talk about this later. 
and then we uh, define the, the process to identify a lead convener for each session. So we, off, we launch this call to, ha to get some proposals on who wants to lead which topic and who wants to collaborate to each topic. And we ask people who make a proposal to give us some information about what exactly what they would like to discuss under each topic. So this was in February, and then we received us a lot of uh, very interesting proposals. We, it took us some time to review all of them, to meet uh, together, uh, discuss all of them, and then we selected um, 18 uh, lead conveners based on their proposals, and then we selected the collaborators for each session. Then we informed the lead conveners and the collaborators, uh, and we asked them to kindly uh, meet by Skype with their group and start preparing their session. We thought that, you know, for a successful EP, what's important is the preparation. So it's to be very clear on who is leading which session. That's the first point that helps, you know, in the organization to have one people responsible for each session. And then uh, make sure that people talk to each other, the collaborators and the convener, to discuss how they want the session to be uh, structured and what exactly they want uh, out of each session. So we, we hope, but we saw also that uh, this happened. Uh, we hope that, uh, you know, our, our input was, was useful, but we also trust that you had a lot, a lot of nice conversations and we also hope that even during this preparation process, it was also an opportunity for colleagues to meet with people they might not know and discuss about interesting things, uh, even if in a one hour and a half session maybe we may not be able to have a lot of outputs, but maybe during this preparation process, we also managed to get some interesting results already. So basically, that's where our input stopped when, <laughs> when we gave it to the hands of the lead conveners and the collaborators. And, uh, and well, we're very happy to, to start it now and see the results of this preparation. Thank you. All right, just carrying on from there, one of the, uh, the sort of spirit that we're trying to cultivate is really one of networking and a true exchange where people feel comfortable, the spaces are safe, where there's some creativity. Um, and as Amelie said, already in the interactions people have had with each other, we've, we've seen that. We've got some safari topics. We've got, you know, interesting use of, of uh, technology in some sessions. There's really going to be a wide range of approaches people are using. Uh, but no PowerPoints. We've tried to help people break out of the kind of work that we usually do, the way we usually work. So if you've prepared one for any of your sessions today or tomorrow, please print it and take it with you. Do not uh, project it if it's at all possible. There will be projectors there just naming the sessions, so you will have a screen with something on it. But we really have worked hard to try to have uh, innovative and uh, very light and interactive creative sessions. One of the, the innovative elements of what we're doing is we actually have uh, invited artists to be present with us. And I'd like to introduce them, if I may. Uh, there's a, uh, the coordinator is Julia. Could you stand up? So this is Julia, and she's been uh, working with FAO to... Uh, do you want to we give her a round of applause? <laughs> So we've been working with Julia to ensure that we have a creative energy in each of the sessions. So there will be an artist in each session, essentially de depicting in an artistic way the conversation, the exchange, and the discussion. I have no idea how this will turn out. I think it'll be fantastic. Um, so I wanted to just introduce the various artists that we have here for each theme. So for theme one, all of the sessions in theme one, it's Rocco. This is Rocco. For the second theme, it's Federico. And the third theme, it's Marta. So these people are all very independent. They will work on their own. Um, you will see them in the room. They will be doing their own thing. Um, and at the end of the session tomorrow, at the end of the two days, uh, we will be pulling together and looking at and reflecting on the work we've done, the conversations we've had, and, and as represented also through these sort of graphic illustrations. So that'll be a part of our wrap-up session tomorrow.
I wanted to mention um, issues of rooms and space. We had sent out, or actually it came out from the UNIG, uh, one of the emails uh, in the last few days where people were asked to just give a sense of which sessions they were interested in. We didn't get a high, high degree of response. I think we had about 40 people respond. So we get a little bit of a sense of the room size that would be needed and if any shifts were required. So those weren't bookings or registrations in a formal sense. Um, they were more used for planning purposes. But I, I did want to draw your attention to the second to last page of your um, EPE book, booklet. If you've all picked that up, there are some outside the room. It's literally the last page. And on that, you have meeting rooms, their location, so the A, B, C, D shows you which tower they're in and then the floor is indicated by the first number. And we will have people also after the coffee break taking the groups up to each room in case you have trouble finding it. But this is what I wanted to draw your attention to was the information down on the bottom right where you've got the room capacity. So we've got different rooms with different sizes, Nigeria being the smallest, it has a capacity for only 22 people. The Philippines room has a capacity for 61, Ethiopia 86, and the Iraq room is the largest. We had um, some of the sessions in there yesterday, 165, and then there's an anti-room anti uh, attached to it that has space for 40. So I just say that because, and I don't want to stampede, but if the uh, session you're interested in is in a small room, you might want to make sure you get there early because we will, ha we will have to... I mean, we'll have to think on, on our feet if we have a lot of interest and not a lot of space. We'll have to, to adjust. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Over to you, Fumiko. Thank you. Um, so uh, if you look at the program here, uh, there will be a wrap-up session tomorrow. So just following up on what uh, the introduc introduction of artists by Deborah. Uh, in addition to artists, we also have a rapporteurs uh, who will be taking notes from different sessions. And we have about 10 of them. Maybe I can ask um, the rapporteurs to stand up as well. Um, there's nobody? <laughs> That'll be a problem. Yeah, about, about 10 of them. And uh, we also really want to thank you, um, the rapporteurs. So in the wrap-up session, which will be in our Iraq room, uh, in a, a building, uh, then we will be uh, uh, presenting a summary and key message of each session. And I'm sure after you, what you've heard here in the plenary session, uh, you will be here the whole day, today and tomorrow. We believe. So in the wrap-up session, um, each of us will be presenting a key messages. Uh, Amelie will be taking care of theme one, and me theme two, and then Deborah theme three. So the rapporteurs for di different themes, uh, different sessions, uh, it would be great if you can also touch base with us uh, in, uh, during the break, just so make sure that we cover the messages. Um, the second thing is that uh, there will be a video uh, team going around the different sessions to take uh, videos so that we would have an EPE video at the end of the, the after the, after the EPE uh, uh, event. And uh, there will be Federico uh, who will be coordinating. So <laughs> he's not a stranger if you see him around taking a video. So then just don't worry. Um, uh, I wanted to talk about also the breaks and some social uh, events. Coffee breaks, uh, at, after this morning session, there will be this coffee break just outside here. But then the other coffee breaks uh, in between the sessions will be on, in the Iraq room, which again is the A building, second floor. And last reminder is a dinner. Uh, today there will be a self-pay dinner uh, tonight. So if you haven't paid to the, the secretariat, uh, please do so by two o'clock today, right? Yeah, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I know also uh, maybe Jean wanted to say something about our Slack community. Yes, you can. A microphone will get to you. Or I can just. I think you probably got a lot, of, a lot of emails from me about Slack, and uh, actually we already have over 80 people joined Slack, 
although not active yet. So I hope everybody can use that, and then we hope in the future we can use Slack as a way to communicate within uh, UNAC. So if you don't know the link, uh, you can check my email, and there's a link to join. And then you just click, and then you can participate. There's also a channel just dedicated to Eval Week. So thank you. It is now my pleasure to show you the video that our EP lead conveners uh, prepared. Welcome to the 2018 Evaluation Exchange Practice, to be held in Rome, Italy, at FAO headquarters. This year, participants will have the opportunity, to take part, and actively contribute, to six of the 18 different sessions, organized, around three main themes, relevant to evaluation. So, which topic interests you more? Listen to our lead conveners, and make up your mind. We can recognize a good evaluation report when we look at it. However, how do we get there? We will have an interactive session in the Evaluation Practice Exchange Seminar of 2018, where you will be sharing the experiences of uh, the International Labour Organization, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, and the World Food Programme on how to get quality assurance of evaluation reports beyond a checklist. It will be a very interactive session, and you are welcome to participate. During this session, we will not only be able to brainstorm on existing practices, but also we will be able to discuss your needs and you could ask for assistance from your peers. After this session, you will have some clear ideas on improving utilization of recommendations in your organization. For the session, please think ahead of the questions you would like to get answers to and experiences you would like to share with us. Together we can make evaluations more utilization focused and we look forward to meeting you. As evaluation managers, we all face similar challenges and wonder how best to respond to them in a way that would not undermine the impartiality, credibility and utility of the evaluation. For instance, imagine that a typhoon hit a country just before the field mission start or that your team leader falls sick. How have you overcome such challenges? If you're willing to share your experience and are interested to hear from others, please join us. We promise the session will be fun, practical and engaging. Last but not least, there'll be a prize for the winning team. We're looking forward to seeing you. As evaluation managers, one of our important stakeholders are the donors. They are often strong advocates for evaluation, but could sometimes be difficult to deal with either because they want to be too much involved in the evaluation process or have unrealistic expectations from the evaluation. In this session, we will look at donors' involvement in evaluation from both a macro and a micro level. So if you have or interested to hear about fascinating donor experiences in evaluation, please join us. And remember, this will be your chance to vent your frustration in a safe environment. Hello, colleagues. Um, as we know, hiring suitably qualified evaluators it's not always easy, and yet it's on them that we often depend for the credibility, utility and impartiality of our evaluations. At the same time, we're increasingly hearing from some evaluators that bidding for contracts in the UN system is not always straightforward, which may mean that we're not accessing the experts that we would like. UNCDF, UNRWA, FAO and UN Women would like to invite you to a session at the EPE to discuss this in more detail, to learn from each other on how best we can do this, uh, as well as better meet the needs of those that we're seeking to work with. Hope you can join us. We really welcome you to our session, which is going to be looking at the impact of evaluation on users. So looking at the use of evaluation, what can we do to enhance the use of evaluation evidence? Uh, we're looking at it from a systems perspective, looking at how we work through organizational structures to try to increase the use of evaluation evidence and also looking at it from a, a cycle perspective, the evaluation process, working with evaluation teams and stakeholders in the evaluation process. We've got some cool apps that we want to try out. It's going to be very interactive. We really welcome uh, everyone's experience on this, what's worked well, what hasn't. We really look forward to having you come and participate and exchange with us. Thank you. We tend to think that a statement based on evidence is in principle stronger than others, right? But does this hold true in the era of alternative facts? 
This session will try to bring the big picture of what is happening in a post-truth world to the practice of evaluation at the United Nations. The session is organized in an interactive fashion with a mix of plenary discussions and work groups that will drill down on the topics and conclude with the specific take-ups. Whether you are an evidence-based believer or a believer of evidence-based, this session will cover traditional issues in evaluation, design, process and use from a fresh and innovative perspective. See you all in Rome. How do you reduce the cost of your evaluation without reducing the quality? How do you justify your choices to a project manager concerned about your high evaluation budget? And how do you justify allocating resources to the evaluation function when there is already an audit function in your organization? We will reflect about these questions through different role plays. And as a participant, you will have the opportunity to intervene directly in the role play or to provide anonymous feedback and influence the dialogue using the Mentimeter application. Dear colleagues and friends, we typically evaluate projects, programs and policies that have been designed in the past. Now, is it legitimate to use current standards and criteria to evaluate these past projects, policies and programs? Let us discuss it together through a scenario simulation. We will simulate cases in which we have to use current criteria and standards for past projects. Let us join, please, in amazing EPE discussion. The value of independence in evaluation, given all of the other conflicting forces that we are witnessing today, in particular fake news, but also the importance of ensuring that evaluations are relevant to what we are doing and to what extent independence and relevance might be a trade-off. So we're going to host a very exciting Oxford-style debate where two of my colleagues from different UN evaluation agencies will argue for the merits of independence and their primacy. And two of us will argue against the motion in front of the House, arguing that relevance is probably a far greater value and principle that we need to enshrine in our, set, in our policies. Please come and engage with us. It'll be a very exciting session. Thanks. As evaluators, we work for transparency. We all know, though, that we cannot write everything that uh, we uncover. There are many cases where we end an evaluation with an issue that sort of stays unresolved. I want to use this session to explore with you what can be done in those cases through the analysis of a number of scenarios so that we don't have to finish an evaluation again with a sense that we should have said something that we didn't. Hello, I would like to invite you all to our session on No Baseline, How to Measure Impact. We've all been in situations where we've been asked for results and impacts, but there hasn't been a baseline to measure the change from. We now have an opportunity to hear from several different agencies on how they resolve this challenge in, in very different and challenging environments by being really creative. We'll be doing this in a safari style and I hope you'll be able to join us on a no baseline safari to hear, learn and discuss what to do in situations when you have to demonstrate impact but you simply have no baseline. See you soon. We will discuss um, how you can really use theory of change and evaluation, what the added value is of using theory of change and evaluation, some tools on uh, how you can actually reconstruct a theory of change based on uh, project documents and how you can also en engage uh, stakeholders more in the design and uh, validation of theories of change. It's going to be a very interactive session where you will be the one who will bring the, the main ideas and discuss uh, with the other participants. It will be a sharing of experiences, not just a series of boring PowerPoint presentations. In this session, FAO, WFPE Fund, UNDP and the ILO will share their experience on methodological challenges of planning and conducting country portfolio evaluations. We welcome each of you to actively participate and we'll use a snowball technique to discuss and present uh, the experiences. Thank you very much. Did you ever want to learn more about how you can use tools such as machine learning, geospatial data and big data in the context of data collection 
and analysis and evaluations. The workshop will be organized in a World Café format, where collaborators from different organizations such as UN Women, JEF, IFAT, UNITAS Program UNOSAT, OIOS, and FAO will show and tell six different topics in a science fair style around the room. Evaluating policy support is not a new area, but the challenges and complexities involved in this type of evaluation transform over time. Under the SDGs framework, the demand for policy support tends to increase, and so does the need for evaluating the support given. This, the aim of this section is to explore the contemporary challenges and complexities involved in this type of evaluation, and also to serve as an opportunity for collective learning by sharing our experiences with this type of evaluation. At the Rome UNEG meetings, we're hosting a session which will be an exciting fishbowl session uh, where different heads of evaluation agencies will look at what the implementation of evaluation policies have taught us. So we'll be sitting around, but we'll be inviting members from the audience as well to ask us questions on what have we learned and what is it that we can do now if we were to reformulate our policies to make them more rigorous, more credible, more useful. And really, do we need to rethink the principles that we look at when we're thinking about evaluation policies? See you in Rome to discuss together and share our experiences as professional evaluators. To all our lead conveners who participated in the, in the video, I know it was hard for many of you, it was maybe the first time. You've been great, excellent. I was very impressed by your level of, uh, of response. So thank you again. Um, during the EP, in addition to the EP sessions, we're also going to have some side meetings. So I would like now to um, call uh, the conveners of the side meetings to briefly introduce their topic uh, from the audience. Um, Lavinia, Gabby, uh, Jacqueline and Adam. Right? A microphone will come to you. So, yeah. You can also come here for sure. <laughs> Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Lavinia Monforte. I work with the Office of Evaluation of FAO and I'm glad to invite you to the seminar on capacity development. It will be held today in IRAC Room 2 at 1.15, so almost at lunchtime. And, but I promise I will keep it light and fun. In fact, I prepare for you a video and afterwards we will share our experiences on how we evaluate capacity development and also what works, what doesn't work what could be the impact of our work on implementers. So I do hope to see many of you there. In fact, if you think about it, what our organization do is uh, mainly enhancing capacities. And uh, this is the key for sustainability. So I, this is why I strongly believe that including it in our analytical frameworks in a systematic way is not just important, but necessary. So hope to see you there. Thank you. Good morning, my name is uh, Jacqueline Flentre. Jointly with uh, Susanna Matson at my side, we are co-convening the Working Group on Professionalization. And those among you who have read the MTR have read that there's uh, lots of uh, ideas and possibilities to further develop work on this important topic. So we are cordially inviting all of you to join us in the lunch meeting to jointly brainstorm, strategize a bit on what the working group of professionalization could be emphasizing on in the coming year. So that's going to be done indeed based on what has been uh, read in the MTR, but also what were on the outcomes of a very interesting roundtable meeting that we organized yesterday. 
uh, in which a lot of VOPs, academics and donors participated. So if you join us in this lunch meeting, you will also become familiar a bit with the outcomes of that meeting. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. I'm Gabby Duffy. I'm with the Office of Evaluation in the World Food Programme. Um, tomorrow at 1.15, we've convened a meeting of the task team on ethics in evaluation. Um, all the organizations that, who are members of that team are, are invited to join, but indeed it is open to anybody else who is interested in what is a very important topic, ethics in evaluation, applying ethical principles in the way that we conduct or manage evaluations. Um, so it will be a little bit of a brainstorming to um, test the temperature and see what is the level of interest in pursuing this kind of work uh, amongst UNEG members um, and also for us to share experiences if any organisations are indeed um, working on ethics principles for their specific agencies. We'd love to hear about that as well. So please do come along, 1.15 tomorrow in the Nigeria room. Good morning to everyone. My name is Adam Ruiz from the World Intellectual Property Organization. And um, I would like you to invite to, to a session on uh, the centralized evaluation, um, national evaluation capacities. Um, as you know, maybe you, we, we have um, a group, an interest group that works throughout the year. It's a safe space for a safe environment for, for sharing experiences on uh, the centralized evaluation. And um, the, the, the session, uh, Wednesday at 1.15, um, will cover issues on, on uh, hands-on experiences from, from the field. So we, with, with colleagues from UNFPA, uh, with, uh, from UN Women and, and UNODC, we will be trying, in a format of a talk show, we will try to convey different challenges and hands-on experiences on national evaluation capacities and the centralized evaluation, the intersection of those two topics that are quite challenging. And uh, we always uh, have uh, you know, problems in, in tackling. So see you all there. Thank you very much. Um, all the information related to the EP sessions and to the side meetings uh, um, are available in the agenda, in the booklet uh, that you have. And there is a nice uh, summary in the back uh, with all the sessions, uh, time, uh, uh, room. So I hope you're going to find uh, the session that interests you more. Um, is there any question from the room? Anyone, any question? No. You know, you can also follow the discussion of the EP online on Twitter uh, with the hashtag UNEG week. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this opening session. Um, once again, please allow me to thank um, Amelie, Deborah, Fumiko, all the EP organizing committee, uh, Jin Zhang, Ariel Hodge, the UNEG secretariat for their support, all the lead conveners uh, for having prepared uh, uh, this engaging and, as they promised, uh, interactive and interesting uh, sessions. And thank you, Masa, Andrea, Oscar, the directors. Last but not least, I want to thank you all for being here today. Um, you will be the engine of these uh, EP sessions uh, and uh, by actively contributing to the discussions so get prepared to share your experiences and uh, the successful outcome of this EP will uh, depend on you. Thank you all and wish you a fruitful uh, evaluation practice exchange 2018. <clears throat> Before you leave, um, I want you to invite you to have a group picture I think you just have to stay set on your chairs and the photographer said will come down very quickly. 
and uh, have a nice uh, picture of, uh, of the group. He wanted to change his lens. So I think the directors and you all can be in the front. Uh, I'll invite some of you to fill this first row. So please, uh, those who are in the back, please come in the front so we can have a nice picture. So in the meanwhile, I'll also re remember. Okay. Lasciamo il podium, le persone sul podium, chi ha parlato. Okay. Più al centro. Facciamo una fila dietro di loro e tutto il resto li mettiamo qui. Li sistemiamo in due minuti. Okay. So, as the photographer instructed, we have to rebuild the podium. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. If you can come up again on the podium, I've got mm, wrong information about the picture. So if you can come up on the podium, yes, it, you're not going to be said, you're gonna, not, not going to be said, you're going to come this way, right? So standing here in front of the podium, the participants, yes. Okay, so I'll invite you to stand up, come in the front, create a line here and a line back in the back of the podium, right? See. Si. So, Masa and Oscar, please sit on the podium. They, loro devono sedersi sul podio. 